We read about the temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, Luke chapter 4. And, of course, uh, throughout his entire earthly ministry, he was assailed by the wicked one. Don't get the idea that Satan finished with the Lord Jesus when these three temptations were over. Quite the contrary, he was constantly watching for an opportunity to trip up our Lord Jesus Christ. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested, tempted by the devil. The word devil means a slanderer. Satan means adversary. Satan, the devil, our enemy. And, of course, he was the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. He did not want the Lord Jesus Christ to do the will of God on earth. It's interesting to notice the time element here. The previous chapter closes with the baptism of our Lord Jesus, which was a marvelous experience, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You see, the mountaintop experiences lead to the valley experiences. God balances our lives. Satan may be the closest to us and the closest to victory when we've gone through a great spiritual experience. It's often the case in the lives of God's people that following some tremendous experience, they have a down, a low period, a time of testing and trial. No sooner had Elijah taken care of the uh, false prophets on Mount Carmel than he was himself so discouraged he wanted to quit. And there were times in the lives of Jeremiah and uh, Moses when they just wanted to quit. Now, Satan knows when we've had these great emotional experiences and these great spiritual experiences, and he's always standing by to tempt us. Why was the Lord Jesus Christ tempted by the devil? Well, for at least three reasons. Number one, to prepare him to be our high priest. This is what we read about in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. That's Hebrews chapter 2 and verses 17 and 18. We also read in Hebrews chapter 4, beginning at verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need." God the Father was preparing God the Son to be our sympathetic, understanding high priest. We can never say, you don't know what I'm going through. We can never say, you don't know how I feel. If you've ever raised any children, you've heard that statement. Nobody knows how I feel. Quite frankly, everybody knows how they feel because we've all been through it. Jesus knows all about our troubles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And so Jesus was tempted to prepare him to be our merciful and sympathetic high priest. Secondly, our Lord was tempted to expose Satan. Don't get the idea that Satan was waiting and anxious to meet the Son of God. I don't think he was. I think that this entire event dragged Satan out of the darkness and out there into the light where all of his tactics can be exposed. Satan does not want you to know what his tactics are. The intelligence division of the army is very important. 
Find out what the enemy is doing. Break their code. Find out what their battle plan is. Satan doesn't want you to know his battle plan. The more he can keep you in the darkness, the easier he can keep you in bondage. But when the Lord Jesus met Satan in the wilderness, our Lord exposed Satan's tactics. And if you and I will simply understand these temptations, we'll better understand how the devil works and how we can defeat him, which is the third reason for these temptations, namely, to teach us the way to victory. Our Lord Jesus Christ stood there in the wilderness as you and I would stand. His first word in chapter 4 of Matthew, verse 4, is man. Man shall not live by bread alone. Please don't say, well, the Lord Jesus was bound to have victory because, after all, he has a divine nature. There's no sin in him. Here I am, born with a sinful nature. God has to be a little more lenient with me. The Lord Jesus did not face Satan as God. He faced Satan as man. He said, I'm going to take the same approach that all of my disciples are going to have to take, and I'm going to show them the way to victory. You and I don't have to have a uh, new body to defeat Satan. We have the same resources at our disposal that our Lord Jesus used when he met Satan in the wilderness. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. The first man, Adam, was tempted in a beautiful garden. The last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, was tempted in a horrible wilderness. The first Adam sinned and was cast out of the garden. The last Adam, the Lord Jesus, won the victory, and he opens the way into paradise. The first Adam was a thief, and he was thrown out of paradise. The last Adam turned to a thief and said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The first Adam failed and plunged the whole human race into sin and death. The last Adam succeeded, and he offers to us salvation and victory. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. Our Lord Jesus had a real body. He did not have a phantom body. He had a real body. He hungered, he thirsted, he was tired, he wept, he felt pain, he died. Because the Lord Jesus Christ had a real body, he can enter into the real experiences of life. Now he fasts that he might be prepared to meet the tempter. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now this first temptation was reasonable. The second temptation was questionable. The third temptation was objectionable. But the first temptation was reasonable. You are hungry. You have the power to turn stones into bread. Turn the stones into bread and take care of yourself. Feed yourself. After all, if you are the Son of God, or since you are the Son of God, you have the ability to do this. The Lord Jesus Christ indeed was the Son of God. In fact, 40 days previous, the Father had said, This is my beloved Son. But notice that Jesus did not pick up that word God. Rather, he used the word man. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Satan was attacking our Lord's natural appetites. Now, he does that. There's nothing wrong with eating if you don't eat out of the will of God. There's nothing wrong with sleeping if you don't sleep out of the will of God. All of the natural functions of the human body are God-given gifts, and they are right in their place and in their time to the glory of God. But if they are used apart from the glory of God, then... We are sinning. You see, a temptation is an opportunity to satisfy a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. I want to repeat that. A temptation is an opportunity to satisfy a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. There's nothing wrong with eating 
unless you're out of the will of God. There's nothing wrong with passing an examination unless you cheat. There's nothing wrong with handing in your term paper unless you've borrowed it from somebody. You see, Satan comes to us and says, now here is a good end, a good purpose. Here is something very noble and good. Now here is my way of doing it. A temptation is the devil's shortcut to try to accomplish the Lord's will, and it doesn't work out. I think that Satan was hinting here that God did not love his son. If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. The father had just said, this is my beloved son. Satan remembered that. Now, if the father loves you so much, why are you hungry? That's interesting. Why are you hungry? If God loves you, you should not be hungry. Now, I hear that kind of gospel being preached in many places today. Oh, God loves you. And because God loves you, he'll see to it you will never be sick. You will never have an injury. You will never have pain. God loves you so much, he wants you to drive the biggest car in the neighborhood. He wants you to have the best job in the factory. This is the temptation that comes. If God loves you, why is he letting you be hungry? And we're better off being hungry in the will of God than being full out of the will of God. God is holding out on you. If he loved you, he'd really take care of you. The devil is saying to the Lord Jesus, use your power as God to satisfy your needs as man. The illegitimate use of divine power. You have the power. You have the authority. Now use it. Use it for yourself. You see, the way a person uses power and authority is an indication of whose will he's trying to accomplish. We face this temptation constantly, don't we? We have authority. We have power in certain areas. And we can, if we want to, use that power for ourselves. We can use it to satisfy ourselves. But the Lord Jesus Christ refused to do that. He answered and said, it is written. He lives by the word of God. And here he quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Let me read it from Deuteronomy 8. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Now, Jesus is not saying man does not live by bread. He does live by bread. But he does not live by bread alone. When we separate the physical from the spiritual, we are sinning. I hear people say, well, you know, my my body is one thing, my soul is something else. No, you are one person, one personality. And what affects the spiritual affects the physical. And the way you use the physical affects the spiritual. Satan was tempting the Lord Jesus to divide his life. He was saying, now, at some times you can live for the spiritual. At other times you can live for the physical. Jesus says man does not live by bread alone. Now, there's the physical but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There's the spiritual. It is the word of God that controls the physical. Don't separate your life into little categories, little pigeonholes. All of life is controlled by the word of God. This is what gave Joshua his victory. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The Word of God, it is written. Now notice what he says about the Word of God. Number one, it comes from the mouth of God. Out of the mouth of God, into the mouths of his people. He feeds us his Word. Secondly, this Word is able to give us victory and satisfaction. The devil is saying, God's holding out on you. I can give you what God will not give you. And our Lord is saying, all that I need will be given to me through the Word of God. As long as I know the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, obey the Word of God, God will take care of me. 
Thirdly, we need every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not just Psalm 23, not just Romans 8. We need every word. Satan today wants you to live for the physical, not for the spiritual. He wants you to separate your life into little pigeonholes. He wants you to ignore the Word of God. And Jesus is saying to you, you take the sword of the Spirit. You know the Word of God. You feed on the Word of God. God loves you through His Word, and God will meet your every personal need. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.